I'm Bob and I like to make stuff. Today we're going to make some air powered rockets. Last year we took our kids to a mini maker fair and one of the groups there had this really cool little pneumatic rocket setup. It was really simple but I thought it was really cool and the kids had a ton of fun with it so I wanted to make my own. Theirs was powered by a bike pump. So the kids could press the pump to pressurize a small container. They would put a paper rocket down onto a tube and then hit a button. The button released a valve that let all the pressure out through the tube and shot the rocket up really, really high. So I thought it would be really fun to make one of our own for our kids to play with using basically the same construction. This project is not difficult at all. The biggest thing and the most time consuming thing is finding all the right fittings to get all the pieces put together. After that, it's just a matter of threading everything together using some Teflon tape. All right, let's see what we got. Here's basically all the pieces that we're gonna use for this project, minus some PVC pipe. We've got a Schrader valve, which will let us connect it to the bike pump. This will be put into this end cap, which will be the end of the pressure chamber, which will be made out of PVC pipe. That connects to this piece that has a thread in it that goes to this piece and that piece down to a pressure gauge, which is totally not necessary, but it lets us know how much pressure is being built up in the chamber. And then the output of that goes into the solenoid valve. This is really the big thing. This is a valve that's powered by electricity that opens and closes when it gets current. So that's attached to a 12 volt power supply and to a wire that will eventually be a button. So when you press the button, the valve will open and let all the pressure out. That's gonna go out through another piece of PVC, which will shoot the rocket up. Now let's just put it together and see if we can get it to work. The first step was to mount the valve stem in the end cap of the PVC. I started drilling from the inside so that it would be mostly centered, and then once I got the hole big enough, I pulled the valve all the way through. These are made to seal the opening as long as the hole is the right size. And for the chamber, rather than using one long tube, I wanted to try to make it more compact. I cut down one long piece of tube into several short ones and used some elbows to connect it into a longer chamber. Every time you connect PVC, you really should use some primer and then some cement. I added a lot of cement around all the edges and then pushed the pieces in, making sure to twist them as they were going in. This helped spread the cement around the entire joint. Once I got the last piece glued on, I started threading the other pieces together and used Teflon tape in there to seal up all the threads. This is absolutely necessary to keep a tight seal. And at that point, I hooked up the pump just to do a pressure test to make sure that it was holding pressure and that the valve was working. I cut a small piece of CPVC, which is just a thinner wall plastic, and used a heat gun to soften it just enough so that I could thread it over the brass threads. Then I glued on another elbow and a shaft for the rocket to set on. And I had to take a break because my books came in. That was awesome. After that, I temporarily hooked up a button just to make sure that everything would fire correctly and put a little bit of pressure in there and did a quick test. Got this thing put together and ran a little test and it does work. It does exactly what I expected it to do, except it doesn't shoot far enough. It only goes up about two stories and we definitely want it to go further than that. So we're gonna take the same idea and just make everything bigger. Everything in this version was pretty much the same. The only big difference was that I swapped out the solenoid for a sprinkler valve. This has a diaphragm on the inside of it, so it basically works the same, but it runs off a little bit more voltage. This video is sponsored by Skillshare, and Skillshare is an online learning community with more than 18,000 classes on design, photography, videography, all sorts of stuff. A premium membership gives you unlimited access to all of the classes so you can get better at what you do for a living or just learn some new stuff for a hobby. In fact, right now we're going through a bunch of classes about videography and lighting to make these videos better for you guys. And Skillshare is more affordable than a lot of other learning platforms. It's 10 bucks a month if you get an annual subscription. And right now, the first thousand people to go click the link down in the description will get two months for 99 cents. It's super cheap and a great resource to learn some new stuff. Go check out Skillshare at the link down in the description. Thanks, Skillshare. After this one was put together, I did another pressure test just to make sure that everything was sealed up. Unfortunately, if you have a leak in one of these joints and it's glued together, you have to cut it off and start over. I followed the same procedure to get this thing put together. The components were just a little bit bigger. 
The sprinkler valve we got requires 24 volts, and instead of plugging that into a wall, we're gonna use batteries. We're gonna use three nine volt batteries put together like this to make 27 volts. I used two nine volt battery connectors using the positive of one and the negative of the other, and just tape these batteries in place since they'll need to be swapped out when they die. The button goes in line in between the batteries and the valve, and so the circuit is only complete when the button is pressed. The center battery works as a safety here because when it's not in place, nothing works. I zip tied the wires around the canister to make sure that nothing would get pulled loose. Then I added some longer wires to extend the distance between the button and the canister. I also added some quick connects to the button wire so that I could completely disconnect it when I didn't want this thing in use. Since the canister is a cylinder, it wants to roll over, but I want to make sure that this thing shoots straight up. So I pulled out one screw at a time from the valve and drove it into a piece of 2x4. Then it was time to test it. All right, so I made these rockets and I'm gonna have a template for these so you can print them out and make your own. They're super easy to make with just a piece of paper from a printer and some scotch tape. That was a lot of fun. We had a pretty good time. What'd you think? It was awesome. It was awesome. Sweet. If you want to see some more videos, I've got several here. You can check them out. And don't forget to subscribe. That's it for this one, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. The spring. The spring. The spring. Hey, I'm Bob, and I like to make stuff. Today, we're gonna make some air-powered rockets.